now let us discuss the common cases or the type of questions which are generally repeated in the questions in the exams so we will be discussing such cases now let us discuss the case number one now while discussing this cases do remember the terms and conditions which i am giving you and then and then only apply the formula or the shortcuts which we will be deriving or be discussing in the further videos so in the case number one we are given that listen carefully if the items two items we are discussing two articles are sold each at rupees x so the selling price of two articles we are discussing about two articles so the selling price of both of them given is x rupees one is sold at p percent profit another one is sold at p percent loss and we have to calculate two things in this scenario a absolute loss or profit that is we have to calculate if this is an profitable transaction or loss making transaction at first and if it is in profit or loss respectively we have to calculate the absolute profit or loss and the second thing that we have to calculate is the percentage profit or loss okay so briefly i have given you the terms and conditions that there are two articles which are being sold at rupees x one at p percent profit and one at p percent loss so firstly we will derive or solve it traditionally and we will arrive at a formula or the shortcut which you will remember for solving the further questions okay now we will calculate for article number 1 which is having profit so we are given that sp of each of the item is x rupees so this cost price of article number 1 will be given as 100 upon 100 plus p where p is the profit percent which we have derived, uh, defined here multiplying this by x now i am using the formulas which we have discussed in the previous video if you do not remember them please go through that video once again so this is the article number 1's cost price which is having p percent ka profit and for article number 2 which is having loss of p percent the cost price is defined as 100 upon 100 minus p multiplying this by the selling price that is x all right now uh, the tot if i have to calculate the total cost price of this transaction it is going to be let this be my equation number 1 let this be my equation number 2 the addition of equation number 1 and 2 so this will be 100x upon 100 plus p plus 100x upon 100 Minus p. Okay, so this is equal to upon hundred square minus p square, and the total selling price in this transaction is x plus x. As we have defined that both of them are sold at x rupees. That is equal to two x. now if i observe carefully we will get to know that the cost price in this transaction is greater than the selling price so always whenever such scenario is there it will be a loss making transaction so this is the one thing that you need to remember now the loss percentage if i have to calculate initially we will calculate the absolute loss in this scenario absolute loss in this scenario is going to be my cost price minus the selling price that is this fraction minus 2x on rearranging this will be equal to 2p square 
x upon 100 square minus p square. So this is the formula for calculation of absolute loss. Now this x is nothing but the selling price at which the both of these articles are sold. Now if I have to calculate the loss percentage, as you know that <clears throat> my loss percentage formula is equal to the absolute loss divided by cost price multiplying this by 100. So my absolute loss which we have calculated earlier is 2p square x upon 100 square minus p square and the total cost price which we calculated earlier is equal to 20,000x upon 100 square minus p square multiplying this by 100. So the denominator gets cancelled over here this and we are left with p square by 100. So the loss percentage formula is p square by 100 and absolute loss formula is 2p square x upon 100 square minus p square. I hope this is clear to all of you. <laughs> now onwards whenever the question arises of this type we will directly use the formulas which we have discussed here. Moving onward we will discuss case number 2. In this case we are given that the cost price of two items is equal okay and both of them one is sold at p percent profit another one is sold at p percent loss so in this scenario the absolute profit or loss is equal to zero let me put uh, explain this with an example suppose i am having two articles of rupees 100 now we are given that let this be the cost price okay <laughs> so the cost price of article number one is 100 as well as the cost price of the second article is also 100 one is sold at 10 percent profit another one is sold at 10 percent loss so the selling price in this scenarios is going to be 100 plus 10 that is 110 and the selling price in this scenario is going to be 100 minus 10 and that is equal to 90. So net cost price over here is 100 plus 100 that is 200 and net selling price over here is 110 plus 90 that is also 200. So the net profit or loss in this transactions is SP minus CP that is equal to zero. So there is no profit or no loss in this transaction. So even if we are said to if we are asked to calculate percentage profit or percentage loss, it is also going to be equal to zero percentage. I hope this is clear to all of you. This is case number two wherein the cost price of the two at uh, two items is equal. The first case was wherein the selling price of two articles was the same. Moving onwards, let us discuss case number three. This is very familiar case. While <laughs> sales in the mall, you might have seen that buy X things and get Y things free. Let us suppose that this is the case wherein we are given that you have to buy X things or X articles and get y articles free we often see the boardings or the holdings which are <coughs> lightened up during the sales that buy one get one free this is the most common sale which is present in the malls so what is the meaning of this if i have to calculate the discount percentage how will i proceed so this is the uh, formula which you will use now onwards wherein you are given that you have to buy x articles 
and you will get y articles for free. So the formula for calculation of discount percentage is y upon x plus y multiplying this by 100. Now <coughs> how this formula arises or arrives okay. So percentage discount is nothing but which we have discussed earlier is discount upon the mark price multiplied by 100. So the discounts if I say that x articles and y articles these are the number of articles each one has equal cost. So the discount which I am giving over here is the cost price of y articles that is over here and the net mark price is equal to the cost price of or the selling price of x articles as well as the y articles. So that is denoted over here. So you can relate this equation with the general formula which we have discussed earlier but just to avoid confusion or to save some time you can directly remember this formula. Now moving on we will discuss the case another case case number 4. Now this is most widely or most common case also termed as false weight case or faulty balance case so in this scenarios what you have to do is you just have to equate now uh, one thing that you should realize that in the question you should be given that while using the faulty weight or faulty balance the shopkeeper this is the term and con these are the terms and con conditions the shopkeeper is selling at cost price. So this one line should be mentioned in the question that is the selling price is equal to cost price but the weighing machine or the shopkeeper is giving you the same amount suppose the shopkeeper is giving you only 900 grams when you demand for 1 kg. So he is saving 100 grams in this transactions overall but you feel that you are getting 1 kg totally and the shopkeeper claims that he is selling his goods at the cost price. So in this scenario how much will be the profit percentage? So in this scenario the profit percentage is calculated by using this equation. So 100 plus gain percentage the answer will come in terms of percentage upon 100 is equal to true scale or weight divided by false scale or weight now just equating this LHS with RHS, I am going to get my gain percentage in such scenarios. I hope this is clear to all of you. Now one thing this is not in case just in formula. If ever there are successive discounts. The formulas suppose there is an A percent discount initially and then there is an B percent discount afterwards or vice versa the net effect or net discount is calculated as a plus b minus a multiplied by b upon 100. Now one thing to note, uh, note here is if I am given that there is a successive increment in the price then this formula is tweaked a little it will be a plus b plus a b by 100 now easier way to remember this formula is there is a general formula a plus b plus or minus of a b by 100 this is the net effect formula now in the discount what happens is 
there is an actual price reduction. So whenever there is a reduction, we will use the negative sign. Seems logical, right? And whenever there is an increment in the price, we will use the positive sign. This also seems logical. So just by remembering one formula, splitting them into cases, we will <coughs> deal with the increment as well as the discount cases together. So for discounts, you will use a negative sign and for increment you will use a positive sign. So this is for the successive increase for two items. So whenever there are two successive increases, suppose you are given that there are three successive increases or three successive discounts. So how will you do? Suppose there is an A, B and C. These are the successive discounts which are given. So in this scenario, what we will do? We have the formula for A and B. So it is A plus B minus AB upon 100. We will get something. Let us say that this is X. And later we will calculate X with C over here. So the formula in this case is going to be X plus C minus of X multiplied by C upon 100. I hope this is clear to you. In this case, <coughs> we are using two terms at a time. If you go on increasing A, B, C, D, let us suppose I will say this is equal to Y. So Y plus D minus of Y D by 100 is going to give me the net increment or decrement. So this formulas can be extended by taking two terms at a time. So these are all the cases widely which I have covered in this video. You must remember the shortcuts which I have provided to you. It will be very much useful in solving the questions and the applications of the questions will be discussed in the next video. Thank you for watching this video.